Okay, inspired by this, I made my storyboard sketch. This is my storyboard sketch. I'm going to save it just as a JPEG. And then, in order to acknowledge the deadline for assignment three, I'm going to go ahead and post it. So you don't need to post your inspiration, but you do need to post your storyboard sketch. It's meant to be rough. Scroll to the very top. It's due October 11th. But, but there's a lot of components to it, and it takes, it takes time. So today, I recommend we try to get your sketch posted, and we start building our assets. Because this is our plan. This is what gets the production approved. OK, so I have my storyboard sketch. What I'm showing you now and was showing at the end of the last video was how, if I want to, I can make what's called an animatic, which is a rough kind of vis pre-visualization of the movement. And in order to do that, I just need to line up all these squares. So I'm using my guides. Photoshop is good at lots of things, but like clean layout is not one of them. So now that I have this whole stack, as a flipbook, I've like carefully stacked them all on top of each other, all in this corner. I'm going to crop it down to my guides to be this square. So now I am ready to try animating within Photoshop because now each frame is its own layer. And I can test the animation just by using the eyeball, right? But there is a tool within Photoshop that allows you to animate this eye on the layers. It just pre-programs it. You can time it out. Because all animation is is sequential images that you control the time for how long they're showing. So this is what I do. I go to Window, and I look for what's called the Timeline tool. And this is not something we're able to do in PhotoP yet. And we're going to not create a video timeline. We're going to create a frame animation, frame by frame. And then we're going to use the tool options. You do not need to do this net yet, but this is what's going to be coming. We're going to make frames from our layers. And we have 10 frames. That first frame I can move to the trash. And now I can play all nine frames. But you see how they say zero seconds underneath them? So it's going to be real fast. So instead of zero seconds, I like for my uh, animatics and for my rough animations, I put in 0.3 seconds. So it's just a little bit faster than three frames per second. Well, that's the uh, frame speed, basically. Yep, that's the frame speed or the frame rate. Frame rate, yeah. And not, now I can get a sense. Even though they're super rough sketches, does this make sense? Yeah, it does. All right, so if that makes sense, I'm good to go. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what's called exporting this. And I'm going to export it in a web legacy format, which is how we save it as a GIF file. And I'm going to save it to my desktop. And I'm going to call this my animatic. And I'll put it to Canvas just so you can be reminded what we're doing. But you do not need to post an animatic. But if you want to try it out, you certainly can. Yep, we just want to kind of take it in. So by showing you that animatic, you will now understand what GIF animations are. And just like a JPEG or a PNG, a GIF format, which stands for Graphic Interchange Format, it's actually the earliest form of digital image. That's why it's so limited in color. But that... All that is is nine frames playing in sequence, right? All this image is, if I save this, and then I open this up with Photoshop, or if I just open it up with Preview, 
it will show me how many frames it is. This is nine frames, conveniently enough. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five and six are identical, right? Because it just stays a little bit longer there. Seven, eight, nine. That's it. So Terry Gilliam is my hero, super efficient <laughs> in terms of how many assets he needed to get the, the visual input. So I want to be able to answer questions on your sketches, and then we're going to start building assets. Now that I have my sketch, I know what assets I need to build, right? And so I have an idea for that. If I go to Pixabay and I look up accordion illustrations, that's going to help me get the assets I need to do my idea. So. So I'm going to look up accordion. And then I'm going to limit it to just illustrations. And I like this one. Let's see, is there another one? I like that one. And I could draw my own. This is. The, the first project where as long as you use something you've already made, you can also just create your own pixels. So I'm going to download these. I don't need them to be big because GIF animations are not high resolution. They're screen resolution. But now I'm going to move those. I've downloaded them into my assignment folder for assignment three. And now I can start building my assets. Now, to build assets, this is like Tim Burton. He has pitched the film Nightmare Before Christmas. And now he has to, he's got the money for it. Now he's got to build the sets. He's got to sculpt the characters or hire all the people to do this. So if I look at my, I like to have my storyboard sketch just open in preview in the corner. So my first frame should be pretty easy to make. I already have all the assets for that. So let's build my first frame. I'm going to open up the setting I want to use. And because I have a PSD file, I might as well open it up with all its layers. And what's nice about that is I've got this PSD file that has a foreground already. So I'm going to really simplify it. I'm going to take all the elements of this foreground these french fries, and I'm going to merge them together. I'm going to call it foreground. I have my middle ground, which is this big duck that's there, roasted duck, with some meatballs. And then I got mountains. So I'm going to take the roasted duck and the meatballs. I'm going to merge those together, call that middle ground. And then the background, I have these mountains, and I have this cotton candy clouds, and I've got a sky. And I think I will use all of that except for the, uh, let's see, everything here. I'm just going to merge together all these mountains. That's going to be the background. So if you're using a PSD landscape, like your first assignment, it's nice to know what things can be assets. And my pizza can be an asset, my pizza sun. I can have it, oops. I can make a copy of it and I can make that asset, you know, move across the sky. And, and the clouds are like an asset, right? That's my texture fill. That's like cotton, uh, cotton balls being stretched out on Halloween Town. And those can move. Those can change. Oh, that's just a texture. Here we go. Oh, that's just a texture. Where do I have clouds? Oh, they're here. So the clouds are not going to move. 
Fine. <laughs> I already locked them to the mountains. The fewer components, the better. But the sun is an asset. So I'm going to call it the pizza sun. Now, is it in my storyboard that the sun changes? It's not in my storyboard, but it's, it's something I can play with if I want to. Or I can just keep it in the same place. So I'm going to identify it. And then I have just layers I don't really need, or they fill in the beginning. And then I have the sky. I'll just call this the sky. Now I could also make the sky change as an asset. I can dark it, I can uh, make a duplicate of it, and I can darken it with levels. And I can transform it slowly, slowly. It gets darker and darker right through my animation. So maybe as the sun goes down, it will also darken. These are ways you can do transformations. Okay, I'm going to put all of this from the middle ground back into a folder. And I'm going to call this my backdrop. Just like when you're setting up a stage. And then my foreground, these are the things that are going to go in front of my character, including all of the texture fills. All these things that affect the coloring, affect everything else. And that's all going to be front of stage. All right. Now I have to figure out my composition because I can move things around. So I'm going to take my front of stage and move it over here because I need to make a square. So how can I get a perfect square? I'm going to use the re rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to start it right at the corner. I'm going to hold down shift. And then I'm going to bring a guide wherever it stops because that's a perfect square. And now that guide will help me place these things. And then I will crop it because I want a square. And I want a square at an exact resolution. And you want to check your edges on your square, like that. I just got to move it over a little bit. And I can transform it and stretch it. So it definitely fills the space. Because we're setting the stage here. I can move it up a little bit. I can move it down. I can play with it. I could even uh, make duplicates of this and like add more atmosphere as part of my animation. So understanding your assets and managing them is a big part of the assignment. Next, I need to introduce my character, right? I'm going to bring in my PNG character. And I'm, then I'm going to set that character down behind that foreground, behind those meatballs and french fries. Because I like the wing to be behind that french fry. And I might shrink the character a little bit to give it room to grow. Okay, there we go. There's my hero shot. I'm going to mark that character layer green by right-clicking next to the eyeball and choosing a color. All right. Now I need to save it. I'm going to turn off the timeline for now. I'm not ready to animate. And I'm going to save this as a new name. And it is not going to be assignment one. It's going to be assignment three. And it is my GIF transformation. And I'm going to call it my accordion GIF transformation. Save it to the desktop. And there it is. Now, that's actually not accurate to what it is. 
because this won't be the full assignment. 